I live for this. My name is Beth, and I am here to smash the legacy of pain and shame that dogs my beloved profession. But before we get to that, I just want you all to know that I'm not even supposed to be here, okay? I was supposed to be a rock star, all right? And in 1980, in high school, I wasn't the only one that thought that. Everybody thought I was gonna be a rock star. They're like, oh my God, Beth, I saw this movie with Beth Midler, and oh my God, she, you reminded me just of you. I'm like, oh great, the one where she dies on stage, wonderful. But you know, I did, I had that bad perm. So um, there I am in my little Catholic high school telling my um, guidance counselor that, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a rock star. She's like, ah, you might want to have a backup plan. So I was like, OK, fine, I'll go to college. So I went to college, and I got uh, a bachelor's degree in English with a minor in, take a guess, theater arts. In 1985, I was working at a Pier 1 Imports, which is what one does with a bachelor's degree in English. And this really nice man came through the line and bought this Charlie Chaplin poster. I said, oh, I love that poster. He said, I'm going to be hanging it in my office. I said, you have an office? Would you like to give me a job? And he said, well, as a matter of fact, we are looking for a receptionist. I was like, oh, well, I just have wonderful phone skills. And he handed me his card. He goes, well, why don't you come by and we'll have an interview. He was a dentist. He hired me from that conversation at Pier One Imports in 1985. That is how I got into this profession that I still love today. And you know what makes me so sad? is there so many people, people I work with, people on social media that don't love what they do. They hate it. They hate it. They hate their jobs. They hate their life. They hate their patients. And you know what? I was one of those people. I was one of those people that would be in tears of frustration and rage by the end of the day because these people were not appreciating everything that I was doing for them. But I found a way out, and that's what I want to talk to you guys about today. So, dental fear. Dental fear is not inherent. It is created. And it's created by interactions with dental professionals. I have nursing home patients that can't tell me what day it is, but they can tell me about their visit to the Eastman Dental Dispensary 70 years ago, and they are fully prepared for me to yell at them because they didn't brush their teeth, even though someone just dragged them to my clinic from their bedroom or the dining room. The patient's emotional experience of their appointment is what matters to them. It's the only thing that matters to them. Maya Angelou said it best. They're going to forget what you did. They're going to forget what you, they, you said. They are never going to forget how you made them feel. If a patient has a negative emotional experience in your office, they're going to write you a bad review. They might even try to sue you. So the patient's emotional experience is task Number one, dental fear is not a phobia. Dental fear is post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Dr. Stefan Braca called it PTDA, post-traumatic dental care anxiety. What does that look like? Let's talk about that guy, the one whose name on the schedule makes your stomach turn. We'll call him Brad. Uh, yeah, I told you, we got to get this done, okay? I don't want you to take no for an answer. Yeah, uh, no, no, we can't go any lower than that. Nope, nope, nope. All right, well, uh, uh, yeah, we got, okay, I told you, put the pressure on him now. Well, well, I got to go, I'm at the dentist. Yeah, right, bye. He's a jerk, right? Well, in 1967, 
when Brad was seven years old. His family dentist thought it was 1947. And he placed huge amalgams in his molars with no anesthetic and a low speed belt driven drill. He yelled at him and he covered his mouth with his hand. And the dentist's hands were big and hairy and smelled like cigarettes. And I found that out when I spoke with Brad and not at him. When Brad opens the door to my office, he's that seven-year-old again, even though today he is a powerful businessman who gets things done. So PTDA is what creates this, patients come in and this, they're in a defensive mode. See, a couple weeks ago, this lady came in and she had these, uh, she had her headphones and she was like girding her loins like this when I called her back. I'm like, sweetheart, it's gonna be okay. And um, fearful patients, these PTDA patients, don't always present as fearful. As a matter of fact, hostility and belligerence are great fronts for fear. The best defense is a good offense, right? So if I'm reacting to their presenting behavior, the whole thing is gonna spiral down. What I learned was that I am in charge. I'm in charge of my response. And um, what I've done is learn how to not take personally patient behaviors that are based in fear. You know, and I, but I tried, I tried that. I tried the snappy comebacks. Uh, excuse me, where do you work? I promise I won't come down there and tell you how to do your job. It doesn't help. The spiral goes down. It can go this way just as easily, and it's up to me. I'm the one that creates that environment, and the environment that matters is this, people, from my eyes to theirs. If you don't have this, you have nothing. How beautiful your office is, whatever institute you went to, how nice you are, whatever technology you have, doesn't matter if you don't have this. And it starts, it starts with me. And how I started was with self-care. And we're not talking about a mani-pedi because I can have beautiful nails and still hate myself and hate anybody that I can't please. And everybody's talking about it this week, self-care, self-care. And uh, the next thing everybody's saying is, don't do it alone, get help. I got help. Everything I'm telling you guys, I learned in the process of helping myself. I got in therapy. I got sober. I haven't had a drink in 24 years. And I live a daily program of recovery. And you know what? All of these things that I'm talking to you about, I learned them. That means that they're teachable. And I would love to teach you. Thanks.